Jamaica, its images painted in this picture postcard of sea and sand. But it's what's happening beneath the water that could shape the future of this island. The building blocks for all coastal life are the coral reefs, providing a habitat for fish, protecting the coastline from hurricanes and stopping beaches from being swept away. But the reefs are being destroyed, damaged by overfishing, tourism and pollution. Just a fraction, 8% of Jamaica's original coral cover remains. What you look down and you see as sort of a burned out browny green reef, that's the colour of the algae in some of the corals. Historically that would have been gold. When you looked at it from the surface you would have seen gold. And that's the sort of thing we're trying to get back to. When we first go in the water and we put the things on the bottom... Marine biologist Andrew Ross is using a new method to try to bring back Jamaica's coral. He and his team call themselves coral gardeners, growing it in special underwater nurseries. Once the corals are ready, they plant them on the reef piece by piece, 50 each trip, a drop in the ocean given the mammoth task. To survive, the coral needs abundant fish. They eat the creatures which damage the reef, which is why the backing of Oracavessa's fishermen is crucial. Murray and Stone are on patrol. They turned from fishermen to guardians of the ocean when they saw that the fish had all but gone. I always wanted to have a boat and to go catch some fish for my family. But what really happened, the place has been just fished out like that and hardly catching any fish and it was real slow. A no fishing zone was established in the bay. A team of 17 fishermen police it day and night. The sanctuary offers time and space to the fish and the coral, breathing room after decades of overfishing and damage. If you are um, running a farm and you are not putting in seedlings, you know what is going to happen to that farm. It's going to run down. 75% um, of rural fish population depleted. Understand? So, you know, we see the need. The fish are slowly returning, but in this tight knit community, the no fishing zone is a source of frustration for some. We can't catch a fish we used to catch first, because we were set in the sanctuary. We're the sanctuary going on now. Damien Scott lives on the beach. Each night he listens to the fish run free. He's abandoned fishing. He can't afford the boat journey to catch further out. It affect me how yes, yes, cars, I don't know. I do have to use make picnic at school, put food on the table, pay bills at the same time. And now we have to go look job or something else. We can't rely upon this to pay bills and feed families. The long-term investment in the bay at odds with the daily need to eat and survive. From fishing villages to tourist resorts, the balance between capitalising on the reef now and protecting it for the future is a source of tension. Thousands of tourists coming to the island are one of the dangers to the coral they pay to see. We dive over 100,000 people and everything starts with education about what to do and what not to do when you, when you get next to the reef. You know, touching a piece of coral can actually kill it. People are always going to come and we want them to come, we need them to come. The two have got to find a way to coexist. Losing the reef would be a disaster for Adam Stewart, head of Sandals, the Caribbean's largest resort chain. That's why he's invested in two fishing sanctuaries. A fully blossoming uh, reef system is, is your ideal scenario. You know, that just leads to a whole world of, of opportunity for us as a, a tourism product. And then, of course, certainly as a, you know, as, a, as, a, as a local fisherman and the local communities that depend on these reefs to be producing. Back in Oracabesa Bay, the fishermen are learning how to plant coral with Andrew Ross. Many in the scientific community are sceptical they can restore reefs that took thousands of years to develop. Ross admits the project is as fragile as the coral he is trying to save. 
he needs the support of those who depend on it most. I think the first people you would talk to who understand that the fishery is in trouble, it's not the man on the beach, it's certainly not the politician, it's the fisherman. Any fisherman who's been in, on the water more than 20 years know that the coral isn't there. Murray and Stone continue their patrol. In this critical moment, it will take many more like them if the nation's coral is to survive.